Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another oil versus acrylic comparison. It should be really interesting, and hopefully it will give you kind of some insight if you're trying to choose whether you want to do oil or acrylic. All right, let's get started. Now we're going to start today with our flat blender brush. I'm going to do the acrylic side first. So in case you're new around here, the, the gray handles are for the acrylic and the, and the black handles are for oil. So hopefully that helps. I'm going to take some white and some some blue. I'm going to just try to paint in a bit of a background ocean and because it's an ocean I'm going to put a little green in it but not a lot. Now these acrylic colors you'll notice are more vibrant than the oil colors because acrylics just in my opinion nothing against them but just in my opinion tend to look kind of flat and, and colorless and dark so I purposely punched up the colors a little when I was designing this particular paint line. That's a little on the turquoise side. I don't want turquoise water. I want blue water today, but let me look and see. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, cool. Now, another thing you can do, you can mist your canvas with water. I don't have much left. Time to go get some more, but I'm not going to today. I don't need to. I'm going to just come right along here and drop in a beautiful kind of a turquoisey blue color for our ocean. Just the underpainting. That's all there is to it. And go right to my line. Try not to go over. This line was painted in acrylic, by the way. <laughs> hey, it's, it's because it dries so fast. It does have its advantages. There's no doubt about that. All right, that looks decent right there. Now we want to do a sandy beach. And we got to do that right now. I'm going to rinse my brush out. You could change brushes. I'm going to just rinse this one out and dry it off. Okay, let's do a sandy beach. We're going to use some some of our yellow ochre light, some of our titanium white, and a little umber. Not bad. Now, of course, we can always add to this, and you'll be able to see the differences between the two different kinds of paint here. This is still wet, and you'll notice it blends pretty well when it's very wet. And it doesn't blend too well when it's tacky, but when it's wet, you can get a nice blend. That's why I paint generally on a smaller canvas when I do acrylics, because not that you can't do bigger stuff, but it's easier to do little stuff because it blends faster. You know, physically have less brush strokes. <laughs> All right, little, little umber and red for the corners of the painting. And then I'd say we have got the underpainting finished on this little guy. Now I've changed to the oil setup and I've got a two inch brush ready to go. Now to start painting in oils, I'm gonna take 50% of our clear gel and 50% of our titanium white. And I'm gonna scrub that in the ocean area and this more or less just represents kind of a, a general oops, a general background you wouldn't always put in fact i don't usually put clear gel and white underneath my seascapes much anymore but this sort of simulates a bunch of paint caked up because we're not going to have that much paint on the canvas today so i'm going to put it on and i'm going to set my palette down i'm going to use a shop towel these are those little blue paper towel things you get in the automotive section they're amazing way better than a paper towel. I'm just going to wipe this off. So we have just a very thin coat of it. And that's definitely something that you want to do if you're not too familiar with painting in oils. You want to be always wiping. In fact, if you're familiar with painting in oils, you probably should wipe too, but just make sure you get it nice and dry-ish. Okay. Now, having said all that, let's grab our blue, black, and green. I'll try to get the colors similar. They won't be the same because the colors are not exactly the same but we'll try to make them sort of similar. Unless you set up side by side and do this, you know, you kind of don't necessarily always think about the differences. Very good, a little more blue right at the top and you'll see what mixes together very easily. All right, let me wipe out that brush. All right, let's grab some, some umber, some ochre, red, white, just like before. Look at my memory go, <laughs> oh yeah. I'm going to paint that right in and then we're going to blend the two together. Nice. Now I, I think we could benefit from just a little more ochre. See that? Just a little ochre and white right there. Oh yeah. Look at the shininess. That's really pretty. A little highlight. Looks good. And then we'll just blend them together. Put a little dark at the bottom just because that's what I did on the other. Okay, maybe a little black into that, a little more of our yellow ochre. Cool. 
Now we need to wipe the entire canvas off. Here's how you wipe it off. You can just, just rub it super hard because you have this, it's not gonna be an issue. If you had a uh, regular paper towel, you'd wanna stop every few swipes and turn it around until you run out of paper towel and you get a new one. But this is so much easier because it won't leave those fibers. Oh yeah. Now that is basically bone dry. It's about as bone dry as you're gonna get it. Watch when I move my finger. See how I don't take any blue and move it down, the no, no sand and move it back. See that? They're kind of stuck where they are. That's, that's about what we wanna have right there. Now we're jumping back to the acrylic side. I don't know if I've mentioned it or not. I do have some, some foundation medium in a cup here, a little disposable cup, because it's so runny. You don't put it down first like you do over here with the oils, with the clear gel. It's really nothing like the clear gel, and you mix it in with your paint as you go, which is not something that you do with the clear gel. All right, hopefully that didn't confuse anybody too bad. I've got my number six flat brush. We're back to acrylics, so I might as well just say it. I of course wrote them up at the top for convenience all right we're going to outline our ocean and this will be really fun you you'll get to kind of decide for yourself whether or not it's easier to paint oceans in oil or acrylic and i don't know if i have an opinion yet but i bet you i do by the time we're done now i want to make sure i've got plenty of room i'm going to start way up here we've got no sky today i haven't even bothered putting one in because the sky deserves its own little video, doesn't it? Okay, that looks decent. Now this is acrylics. You're gonna get hard edges if you're not super careful. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush and with just a dry brush. Now remember our background is dry. I'm going to swoop backwards like this to create a little highlight kind of catching that next wave. I'm gonna use that leftover paint and just drag it back. Usually this part of the seascape is, is not super important. I will, however, just reload my brush. And of course, this isn't like a seascape lesson or anything. I'm just trying to show you side by side so you can see how they react. We've got um, full length lessons available on the website if you need some, some actual help painting seascapes. I'm gonna go pretty fast today, so this is maybe not the, maybe not the best way to learn. There. All right, now, the other thing we need to do, I'm just going to establish very lightly. I don't want a whole lot of hard edges. I'm going to be just establishing a little bit of the rolling, you know, foam cascade look like that. Good, see how it goes in and out? That's sort of a, that's sort of standard procedure. I will go ahead and do a rock be because uh, that's something we normally see. Oceans, you know, kind of crashing up against the rock. And that's something that everybody paints, so I'll, I'll put that in. While we're in the sketching mode, I believe I'll sketch in our, our little ripples here. One on the that sand's not quite dry. I need to be careful with that. But there's one on the sand and it comes down. You don't want it all to come straight across, even though we're just experimenting today. I'm gonna do the eye of the wave and then we'll go over to the oil side. This is my custom tapered round. Probably one of my favorite well, acrylic brushes. One of my favorite acrylic brushes. All right, got that color going. This is bone dry, that's important. I'm gonna set my brush right down there. Paint in a little eye of the wave, wipe my brush out so that it's dry. This brush, you don't wanna use it straight on, you wanna use it flat. And if you haven't tried it, this is like, if you're gonna try just one brush, this is it. This is a really unique, very different brush. You've probably never painted with anything like it before. I know I hadn't. And. Uh, Boy, I got it in my hands and I loved it. So give it a try. They're available on the website. It's the custom tapered round. But there you go. Just dra dragging it out. This is called a dry brush blending effect. And this is the way you would paint clouds in acrylic. This is my favorite cloud painting brush when it comes to doing acrylic skies. Well, now we're back to oils. So I've got my three quarter flat. Just a little bit of a swoop right there. I wouldn't do this as close to the other one as I can. I can't believe they actually turned out this similar. This isn't easy to do, you know, a different medium and try to get them similar. And I feel like, the, the, you know, the closer they are to the same, the easier it is gonna be to tell the differences, you know, in between the two different kinds of paint. I'm gonna scrub here and you'll just, just look at and see how they, look and see how they react differently as I scrub. See how they blend and see how those edges just are softened automatically. I will say one thing about oils that 
that's a little different is just by scrubbing, look closely. Do you see how you worked maybe 10, 20 different values, you know, light and dark that in there? See that? There's some light pockets, some super dark pockets and everything in between. Now with the acrylics, you get that by dry brush blending, but you don't get it as easily in my opinion. Having said that, you know, when it comes time to detail, the acrylics are, don't, they don't mix. And so you can layer detail over detail over detail without ever having to worry about mud, which is a huge bonus. Huge, huge bonus. And your darks, you know, they go in dark. So it's just kind of differences, you know? So there's that. Oh, let me get a little more paint. And let's get our little crashing waves here in the background. Right there. Okay, and let me sketch our little, our little ripple, which goes like that. And then our secondary ripple, which goes something like this. And down. Cool. I like that. Now, eye of the wave time. It looks like that slopes a little more than it should. I'm gonna just bring that up. Just, I'll fix it later. All right. Let me grab a little bit of our, our yellow and our white and blue. That looks like, a, looks like a good color right there. I'm gonna place the eye of the wave in. I'm not using any different brush for this, the same brush. Okay, you place it right in. I'm gonna go a little brighter, a little more white right there. That looks pretty decent. Let me set this aside where it's not gonna make a mess. And let me find a blender brush. Make sure it's good and clean. Now I'm gonna set this, the top of the blender right here and begin to do some circles and blend it right out. Oh yeah. The key is don't over blend. If you come back and you touch this again, you're gonna absolutely lose it. You gotta leave it alone. That's the, that's the hard part is, is backing away. Now you remember over here on the oil, how I put a little extra white and then I blended the whole thing. So there was kind of almost two tones in here and the acrylics, I didn't do that. It needed to dry completely. Now I can come back with a lighter white tone and I can place that secondary kind of light right at the top of the wave. You place it in just like you did the other one, but it's a lot smaller. You wipe your brush out and then you dry brush blend this. And just to confirm, you know, this is all dry. And that's the way you layer your colors to create that really bright effect. Acrylics can be just as bright as oils. You just have to know how to layer them properly. That's the other thing I like. I like the finger blend with the acrylics. That's fun. Now let's work on the top of our wave. Let me grab our little flat brush. I'm going to just grab a simple highlight color, some white, a little blue. It's just not that big of a deal today. Good enough. I'm going to just pull down to begin my little crashing wave motion. Maybe kind of smudge it here and there at the end. Create that nice glazed effect. Oh yeah, now that's great, but it's not, it's not a full highlight. Let's grab a little white, a little blue, mostly white. Let's get us a full little highlight right out on the edge. That's pretty. Always wiping my brush out before you blend. Otherwise you got too much paint going on. There, that looks good, doesn't it? Now let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and highlight the splash of the wave. For that, I think I'm gonna change brushes. Let me dip that one in water. And uh, you dip it, you set it down on the table. It keeps it kind of wet and keep it from drying out for a little while until you go have lunch and you forget about them. <laughs> oh, that's always sad. Take some, <laughs> take some highlight color and just place on very quick. So you can work in small batches. Don't feel like you have to do the whole thing all at once. Let me get back on my brush. There. Just do small, small batches. And that way you can work in this soft edge. This is just the dry brush blending effect again. It's kind of pretty. Make sure you don't have any lumpies. Oh yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I kind of like that. Add a little extra highlight. And this is again, you just, just to see how the mediums are, are different. Not necessarily to create a pretty ocean, which we will not get in this amount of time. Each layer gets a little brighter because this is going on pretty thin. It dries pretty quick. 
see that pretty quick. Not fully dry. You can see I messed it up a little there, but it's getting close. Now, I wouldn't mind seeing even just a little shadow in the foam. So let's just take a little purple. That's a good, that's a good color when you're doing these oceans, just a purple. And kind of just, oh, it's a little dark now. Acrylics do dry out just a touch darker, as everybody probably knows. Maybe just work in a little of that. That'll be nice. Creates that extra, extra touch of detail. Nice. Can't forget, can't forget about that rock. I'll put that in as soon as I've finished this. That way I won't forget. Okay. Now I think highlight, accent highlighting the wave should be another step. We'll probably do that. It'll be a one step here and one step there. So I'll just know that it's going to get a little brighter. Just continuing with this brush, brown and black. And I'm going to place in that little rock I've been thinking about. Kind of a simple, straightforward little rock. Now when you're doing seascapes, you don't have to paint the rock in solid. Just anything like that's fine. And a rock here and there just for, just for fun. It'll show you the differences kind of when it comes to doing these rocks. I don't want to paint too many because i got to go do them over there. But you'll see the differences when we paint them over the wet surface. Now I've grabbed a clean three-quarter brush and it's time to kind of work on, work on the oil ones. Of course, I've changed back to my oil palette, which is really dirty. <laughs> Needs a good cleaning, doesn't it? I'm going to take some white and a little tiniest touch of blue, but way more white because I'm relying on the blue on the canvas to do some of the, you know, softening of my color. So let's see, I believe, what did I do? Did I start? I think I started right here on the other one. So let's do that on this one. I'm going to pull it down and just let off. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I can, <laughs> I can live with that. That looks good. Just pull it right over. Something along those lines is going to really work well. I like that. All right. More paint. I'm going to go ahead and do this right here first. I don't know if it's the same order. The order is super unimportant when it comes to seascapes for the most part. Actually, they're more forgiving than landscapes when it comes to doing them in order. There. Whoops, a little chunk of, little chunk of paint there. Quite a lot. There. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to stop for a second. Let's go on this side. I'm going to paint in my highlight. Now you could wipe this off if this is too muddy. Uh, it's right on the edge if I had to, if I had to guess. It looks like it's right on the edge. I would probably wipe it if I was doing a painting that actually mattered. But because we're just playing around today, I'm not going to. There, that looks decent. Now, here's the cool thing. What can we get done with the blender brush? Let me just take, make sure it's nice and clean, take it and, and uh, just <laughs> straighten it out. I think I cleaned it too aggressively there. All right, that looks good. Now one thing with oils, you're always wiping the brush on the paper towel to clean it. You're never, never trying to dip it into, into anything to clean it because you don't want any of your oil. I use baby oil in my case, but whatever you're using to clean, you don't want that up in your painting. There, that looks good. All right, actually that looks really good. I, I like that, I can, I can live with that. Let's go ahead and get that purple tone in. Yeah. Get that right up in here, right along that edge. Tiniest bit right up in here. Good, and that'll blend real nice, I think. And the, really, the fun part is the darks. I just can't wait to do those. They always look so good. I almost forgot to paint in our little rocks. Here's some brown and black. And let's put in our, our little rocks. Oh, you see the difference? See how they kind of mix? Now, some mixing is a wonderful thing, but you don't want them to get muddy. Some mixing will create all these little variations that are just so, so effective, you know? Good. But you see the difference. They kind of, they go on, at first they go on dark, but then they get lighter. The more you stroke them, the more they get light. Something to, something to note. You can come back with a loaded up brush. You can bring in the sharp edge if you want it. And then you, you do your bottom part, well, it gets softer. It runs out of paint. Now I was looking at them from far away and you can definitely tell this one's a little 
sharper, a little harsher. This one's more airbrushed in the eye of the wave, especially. But I don't think that matters. This is just a slightly different style, very similar. But you know, when we go to float our little water lines, I think this is gonna look really good. So I'm not gonna try to blend it more. You could probably blend it, make it look a little closer to that one, but take a lot more time. Just something to, something to note. All right, back to the acrylic. We're going to do blue, red, black. Kind of equal mix of each. All right, let's see what this does. I'm gonna set it right here under the wave and I'm going to rock my brush back and forth. I'm gonna stop. You're only gonna get about two inches worth. Then you gotta stop, grab another brush. This is a number four flat bristle brush, very stiff. I'm gonna use that to pull. Well, I would if it was if it was slightly damp, it would pull. <laughs> just dip it in water. There we go. And just pull that color around. So you see, because my brush was dry, it really wasn't helping the wasn't helping the dry brush blending. So put a little water in it, and your wet brush will work better for dry brush blending. <laughs> yeah, because that makes sense. Cut in right under your under your wave. Make that stand right up. Not bad, not bad. Look at that. Get a little, a little shadow, and then kind of work your shadow out. Again, using dry brush blending, which is the way you blend with acrylics 99% of the time. Very, very little paint, and you're using very little pressure. This isn't a very big ocean today. You certainly would do a lot more if you're doing a full seascape. Now, let me wipe this brush off, grab us a little bit of white, red, blue, oh, just whatever really, on the blue side, most of the paint out of the brush, rock is dry, I'm going to just dry brush blend a little of our mist, that's too much paint in the brush, right over this rock to set it into the painting, see that, you set your brush down, you roll it, and you get that beautiful effect. So you can just have it crash right over that rock, but leave that little point sticking out. I'll try to do that over with the oils as well. But nice. It's pretty effective, isn't it? You can float this mist anywhere you want it. All right, now, kind of continuing with that step, I would like to, I would like to get some highlight going, some blue and white, blue and white highlight. This is our flat brush. And I'll just work it back and forth and start to get these little ridges of ridges of foam going there. Kind of keep the light in the middle of the painting. Don't want too, too bright on the edges. There, and before it dries, be sure to blend it out like you see I'm doing here super important and you can kind of give yourself an extra wave or whatever you want to do but here's how easy it is you can just come back with your with your flat brush and you can just smooth it all together so take it and drift it right up this is where you're starting to kind of starting to kind of work the two together creating that softness now let's go ahead and repeat those steps in oil so i've got some black blue a little red and I'll just lighten it a tiniest bit, but it will lighten up more when we touch the wet oil paint up here. And just like the other side, I'm going to, I'm going to just brush it like this, except I don't need to be as, as big of a hurry. I can go a little slower and just allow it to soften automatically. There we go. Maybe run that up. Don't want to go too crazy or I'll lose my pretty little ocean wave there. The bottom of it at least. Nice. That's pretty, pretty much it. Let me wipe out my brush and sort of drag this around. Oh, we don't want to, don't want to lose the eye of the wave. It's so easy to lose the eye of the wave. All right, that's pretty much the same, isn't it? It's close. It's pretty close. If you've ever tried to copy anything exactly, you'll know that uh, even if you're using the same medium, it would be, uh, be pretty hard. All right, that looks good. 
Let me wipe out the brush and let me grab some, just some random blue and white's fine. I just want to create that feeling of, of a little mist right over this rock. You got to be sparing when you do this. It'll want to mix and become muddy. See that? Like very, very little amount, you know, just less is more. Just do a little amount. Cool. Now let me, uh, I'm going to blend that, but there's no rush. I'm going to wipe my brush out and I'm going to grab some white and whatever was left over in my brush. I'm going to go ahead and just see about highlighting right in here. Of course you put it down bright and then you stroke it a couple times and it becomes a little more subtle. There, I'm going to start to establish just a little more. A little more life in this ocean, just like the other one. It may not need quite as much final highlight. Of course, you won't get as much of an opportunity, right? Because it, it would go muddy. You can't highlight it too many times. So there you go. Let me smooth it out just a touch. Not bad, not bad. Good. They'll look more similar here in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and take my my blender brush and just hit these areas right here to soften. Now back to the acrylics. I'm going to just get us a nice light color, mostly white actually. And I'm going to go ahead and just brighten up the top of the wave one more time. We can glaze this with as many highlights as we want without any risk of it becoming muddy. And so we're going to definitely, definitely use that. See that this is an extra highlight and you could do more if you wanted to. Make sure you have a nice soft ish little edge. See, Soft ish. Not so soft that it's blurry, but you know, a little touch more there. You kind of just go back and, and add all these little details again. You get a little more opportunity to detail it in the acrylics. I'd say with the oils, you gotta be a little more decisive with your strokes. Decisive, I think it's the right word. Nice. And then perhaps just a little, a little more right there. Cool. Anyway, I like that. All right, now the rest is going to be pretty straightforward. We'll just sort of highlight a little, that one turned out a little brighter, just the nature of doing the oils sometimes. But we'll, we'll bring the brightness up with the did I call this a detail round earlier? I don't know if I did or not. It's a micro filbert brush. It's amazing. I haven't gotten more confused <laughs> working back and forth between the oils and the acrylics. That's pretty good though. Shows you what just a few moments of work will get you. I haven't spent too long on either of these. Just clean up along the bottom of the rocks. Make sure you get it nice and opaque. And now lastly, I'm going to get just a, a soft color, soft blue, and I will drag in a little more medium, a little softer of a blue, and I will drag in these little lines of foam. You could do this with a liner brush, but I'm probably not going to get the liner brush out today just because I don't need to go that detailed. <laughs> we're not framing this, we're putting it on the wall. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish up by doing the same thing on the oil side. I gotta be careful, I can't put my hand down on this canvas. You can, but you could just take your pinky and you just touch down. You won't mess it up too much that way. But I'm gonna not probably do that. There, that looks decent. Get a little, little more light there. I like the light there. A little touch more light here. Good, so you can just place it on and you will you will be constantly picking up paint on the end of your brush and you know, you put it down you kind of your color will get muddy if you're not careful. So watch that you don't get your, your paint too caked up with a bunch of this dark, wipe your brush on a paper towel or something before reloading it. You know, that'd be a good, a good thing to do. There, looks, of course it's a good thing to do. What am I not doing? Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay. That's okay. We just sort of have fun around here. Don't we? Can't worry about it too much. Now I'm going to take some blue and white. I'm going to just kind of do the same thing. Just bringing in some of these lines, nothing crazy. It's, it's honestly, it's super similar. 
super similar. Just pulling them in, following the shape of the wave, a little texture here and there where it's an oil painting. People pay more for that sort of stuff when you're doing oil paintings. They pay more for the texture. <laughs> Get that curve of the wave going. Now you'll pick up that dark. You want to be careful not to bring it down. You want to be real careful about that. So that's something to watch for. Of course, I'm laying it on, almost glopping it on thick. And I could care less about my hard edges because I'm, I know I'm going to blend them away later. And then what's kind of fun to do is just grab your blender brush and just go back and touch it. Just, just touch. Barely, barely blending. Just touching the stuff that I put in. Here I'm going to kind of pull across the same direction that I got the, the foam going. Oh, and it softens it back so nice. You can get an unbelievable result doing it this way. Get a little, a little ripple there, see, just by softening it. And you can even take the blender brush and just draw it back and kind of get, kind of get some of these reflections going. Oh yeah. All right, well, I think we're done with our little experiment today. I really found it interesting and fascinating, you know, the differences between oil and acrylic, especially doing something like a seascape where there's a lot of soft edges. Just two different ways to get those edges. It's kind of fun to see. Don't forget to check out both the acrylic and the oil lines available at our website. Thanks for watching.